And we thought how we can migrate this low-tech industry and make it um, as, as uh, unique as we can and, um, and create, a, create a high-tech industry. Uh, we didn't know anything about it. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Lomitech and sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Upwest, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, and Birthright Excel. Welcome to another episode of 20 Minute Leaders. Today, I'm joined by Iran Horowitz, CEO of Credit24. Credit24 is a fintech company which aims to create a one-stop shop for the online lending industry. The company has developed a turnkey solution which allows fully automated underwriting, operation, and collection alongside KYC and a sales retention platform. The company uses a proprietary solution which allows partnerships with various companies, from insurance companies to retail giants to offer loans, credit lines, or POS payments, without the need to develop anything on their end nor setting up a call center. The company was established in 2016 by Iran Horowitz, Asaf Lof, and Ziv Rosbach. Iran Horowitz, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders from Credit24. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me. You know, we're doing this over over a you know web video. I feel like we're almost sitting in the same room. But in these yes. next twenty minutes, I'm going to learn all about your personal journey into the into the fintech space, the the online digital lending space. Uh, quite a journey. Uh, you know, we're going to go overseas to London for a bit. We're going to come back to Israel, talk about your experience. Uh, and I want you to take me back a little bit and tell me, you know, your entrance to the fintech world. What what is that about? And a little bit about who you are. Okay, so actually, when uh, when I started um, the online uh, online business, let's call it like that, um, we didn't start from uh, fintech. We actually started at the beginning of um, the early uh, two thousand. Uh, we started um, with uh, online gambling, uh, which is something I'm a friend of mine in the army. Uh, I served Shmona uh, Matayim, which is uh, uh, I think everyone already know it. Um, <laughs> So a friend of mine was uh, was working with uh, a company in Cyprus, which uh, which did uh, online casino. Uh, it was called Build a Dealer, um, and um, we started from there. He said there is something really interesting. It's called online gambling. Uh, you have to try it, and uh, and I started uh, as an affiliate. Uh, over the years, uh, this business was amazing. Uh, uh, people from the online gambling uh, industry, they went, uh, they started doing uh, Forex, uh, binary, payday loans, everything you can, uh, you can think about. And then um, um, Asaf, one of my partners, he came back from, uh, from the Miluim uh, one day and he said, uh, you know, I had a friend over there and he, he's supposed, uh, he's working uh, at a big company and he's supposed to get paid uh, from the company, but because he went to the Miluim, he should get the money from the from the state, um, and he, yeah, he's going to get paid within uh, forty five days. But he told me he needs the money now, so I had an idea. Let's try and lend the money uh, because it's uh, it's a sure thing. Like uh, I'm sure the he's going to get the money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, no issues are going to happen with um, with uh, the state of Israel paying you. Uh, uh, your uh, your salary, uh, and that was the idea. And then we started investigating uh, this uh, this. Um, it wasn't even fintech. It wasn't even online lending. It was just uh, lending. And we thought how we can migrate this low tech industry and make it um, as as uh, unique as we can and um, and create a create a high tech industry. Uh, we didn't know anything about it. Uh, we didn't know that there is uh, fintech and online lending companies uh, in other places in the world. Uh, but um, but this is what we do our our uh, whole life. So we said, let's try it. Um, Amazing. And then within, uh, we were sitting at uh, Ziv's apartment, which is uh, the the third partner, and we were sitting in his room. Um, it was a six meters uh, room. I think I even wrote uh, something about it. Um, 
And we said, let's try and do something with it. Uh, so we opened the website and, um, and we created, uh, we created uh, something really simple. And within 10 days uh, and a little bit of uh, PPC, we, we sold uh, a few hundred thousand shekels. And each loan was Whoa. about 5,000 shekels, 6,000, 7,000. That, that pretty much was the, the business. We said, okay, now let's stop and think what we're going to do with it. Because obviously we have a business. We have a saying here between the, the three of us saying, um, one is luck and two is a business. Uh, we started <laughs> when we did online gambling, we said, if we get, if we get one player, it's luck. But if two players are, um, are registering and depositing money, so we are right. a business. Uh, so we said, okay, we definitely have a business. Now let's see what we can do with it. So we stopped everything. And we started building um, something from scratch. We didn't know anything about it. The, the lending industry here is pretty much was pretty much banks and uh, let's call it uh, mafia. I think it's uh, it's the best word to describe it. And uh, the three of us was something unfamiliar within uh, within this view. Um, and then when we started uh, investigating the business and see how it goes, we, it was fascinating because we saw that no one is doing anything online. Uh, everything is done manually. And we have to do, we had so many ideas. We had, uh, we wanted to start working, but we had nothing. We had right. a little bit of uh, capital, uh, which we wanted to invest at the beginning. Um, but we had to start uh, developing everything around it. And that's pretty much how, how it started. Um, and from there, we have a lot of stories. <laughs> so, so now we're getting to the juicy parts. I'm just going to let you continue because I'm, I'm just enjoying hearing this story. Um, okay, so, so we started, um, so we started uh, building um, uh, a system from scratch. And uh, we thought, okay, what, what we need to do with it? And then we saw that the... Uh, um, um, uh, the underwriting process is done manually. Like uh, what you do is you get um, uh, the person's ID number, then you go and check it in uh, on uh, public um, records and you're getting his bank statements and his paper slip and you want to see what he's doing and how he's acting. And the entire process can, can take a lot of time. Uh, so we, we learned how to do this process manually uh, over a lot of people. Um, and then we start building the technology to do everything automatically. Now, Israel is lacking, uh, I think, uh, every possible technology, technological solution you can think about. Um, so there's no API. Uh, there's no way to automate uh, most of the things. So we had to start developing uh, bots which can, uh, uh, which can act uh, as a human. So, um, so we build a bot that takes the ID and goes to um, uh, public records and takes out all the information uh, manually. You download HTML, then you have to parse it, and then you have to, and then you have to see what what it says, and then you have to start analyzing it and putting it into a database, and um, and then you have the bank account. So, how can you how can you automate it because everything is manual via uh, papers. No one even, no one is even taking pictures or sending a, a PDF. Um, so we start developing this, uh, the technology ar uh, around it, uh, which and the focus was was with the underwriting because that that was the first thing we saw. Um, so we started uh, Credit Twenty Four um, at the beginning, at the end, sorry, of uh, two thousand fifteen. Uh, mm -hmm. after uh, a long journey in the UK, uh, which I will tell you about. And um, then uh, we focused, the, the first two years, we focused uh, on doing underwriting as, uh, as, uh, as much as we can. Like uh, Everything mm -hmm. we can do, everything we had to do manually, uh, our competitors have to do manually, we thought how we can do it um, online. And uh, right. We said the banks have all this information, so so they have so much advantage. How we can 
uh, how we can get this advantage and use it uh, the same way. How can we take the information the bank has and, and analyze the same thing and get, uh, we think, a better uh, conclusion? Mm -hmm. uh, so the first two years, we, we invested a lot in building the underwriting model um, and gathering as much information as we can. And we always mm -hmm. thought that um, every loan that uh, someone takes, like um, even, it, let's start from the beginning, when someone asks for a loan, uh, so he either gets it or he doesn't. At that point, right. uh, the company he contacted, uh, they forget about him. Like he's, um, if he didn't get the loan or he wasn't interested, then he's um, dead from, uh, from a company point of, uh, point of view. We, right. we thought that actually, uh, and we got it from the online gambling industry, no one is dead. Like you can register and then you can deposit three years Interesting. after. So let's do the same thing, but with financing. Let's take the mm. elite, let's take the person and continue tracking everything he does, everything we can see uh, on an ongoing basis. Because today he's not interested or today he's not qualified for a loan, but things can change over time. And we don't right. want to lose it because we already paid uh, for, uh, for this uh, specific lead. Um, right. And the more information we gather, the better the conclusion we have. Um, so we took... Um, so we took the, the whole concept of uh, sales and retention from, from the online gaming industry and we implemented it with, uh, with the financial uh, world. Um, and then we saw that, well, uh, we're getting information and then suddenly someone, we, we said he's qualified for a loan, uh, but he didn't get a loan. Uh, six months later, nine, 12 months later, he, was, uh, he went into bankruptcy. So we took the, we marked it, we checked the, the, the bankruptcy uh, checkbox. And then we started analyzing manually if we, at this specific, uh, at the specific time he registered, if, if we could uh, forecast the, the bankruptcy, what were the, the signs? Oh. If, if there were any signs of this person going into bankruptcy. Um, and then we, we started building a model saying, Let's take all the information we have and, and, and put it uh, and put all those people in, in the same place and see who went to bankruptcy, who didn't, um, and then try to uh, make a decision uh, when the user registers based on that information. Um, right. And we saw that there are a lot of, um, a lot of uh, value, uh, a lot of uh, data points. Um, we can see, and uh, if this specific uh, data point uh, with uh, a different data point uh, altogether, then the chances of going into a bankruptcy is, uh, let's say, 12%. And if mm -hmm. none of this happens, the probability of default is going down drastically. And then we right. started building those, those models and saying, okay, how much... PD, uh, the, the probability of default. What is the probability of default we want to we wanna have in our company? So we saw that the numbers are, um, uh, are, pre are pretty high when going into uh, non-banking solutions because the interest rates are high. Uh, mm -hmm. But we wanted to build a model which uh, later on banks or um, big companies will see and say, okay, this is what we want to have. Um, right. We set a mark at about uh, two percent uh, default rate, and then we started analyzing all the data: who is going above it and who is going below it, and what are the connections between between all those people. Um, this is the way the the first model started. So, and obviously, the more information you have, the more users you have, uh, the better the, the 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 quality of the of the underwriting is uh, is much much better. Right. Uh, so this is how it started. Like we came from a uh, from a different point of view, um, yeah. and we came from a completely different world, uh, the online gaming industry. And we said those those industries, the the online gaming industry, has so much. Uh, they know they know fraud, they know retention, they know sales. They are, they are the best, and this is what we did for more than for more than uh, uh, ten or twelve years. 
So, so let's try and take all those things and do and implement it uh, in the in a new uh, in a new new world for us. Um, very very cool. Yeah. So so we took a lot of things uh, things people cannot understand even if we tell them give them those examples now, and they still ask us how do you know that. Based on those six questions you ask, how do you know that this person is dangerous? So we give them an Amazing. example and we tell them, look, with, uh, because he registered with this phone number, I will show you what happened to 20,000 or 10,000 people who registered with this number. What is their uh, default rate? And you can see it's going much, much higher than what we thought. So I know we're going to have a false positive but when you're working on big numbers, and especially on online lending, which you have more people wanting money than money you can you can give, then then we are okay with the with the, this decision. Um, this is pretty much how the this uh, this started. Uh, two years, I think, about two years after we started, um, we we figured out okay, now we have this underwriting process. We can which we can always. Uh, improve. We always add things. The system is uh, it's a, it's an AI system, so it learns a lot of things uh, automatically. Um, but obviously, this is not it. Okay, so we are doing underwriting, but everywhere we go, people say we do underwriting pretty well. Uh, we are a bank, we are a big company, so we know how to do underwriting. So we said, okay, we we know we are doing things better than most people, but mm-hmm. Um, we're sure it's not it. So what we found mm-hmm. out was actually something we took from someone uh, who's doing, uh, he has a, a company, he had a company, he sold it uh, for a buck or two, um, a Forex company. And when, when he did it, because I know him from the beginning, he always said, uh, those companies, they have hundreds of employees I want to do the same thing and have only a few dozen employees. How can I do it? And he figured out that most of the um, uh, operational things are very time consuming and you need a lot of human resources to deal with it. So we said, okay, if it works, if it works for the online gaming industry and Forex is pretty much part of it. So it must be the same here. So we, we looked at a company that are called Mimunia Shield, and we saw they had hundreds of employees and, uh, and they are dealing with uh, people uh, moving from a job, uh, one job to another. You have to train them. You have to do a lot of things. They have mistakes. They don't work 24-7. Right. And we said, okay, how do we take this whole, whole operational process and now we make this automatic as much as possible? So... We, we learned what we have to do manually, and we started wrapping it with technology. So now pretty much, just, just to understand the numbers, uh, Credit24 has uh, six employees, including the three of us, and we are dealing with hundreds of loan requests on a daily basis. So, and mm-hmm. when you visit our office, you won't hear the phone ringing, you won't hear uh, a lot of noise, you won't see a call center. And this is something you will see when you're going to uh, any other company. So what mm-hmm. we did was started um, building automatic process to everything. Like the first thing uh, you see in a uh, lending company is a call center. You see a lot of people sitting on the phone, uh, calling people, answering calls. And then right. you say, okay, uh, how can I make this automatic? So we created right. um, an IVR system which does pretty much the whole process automatically. So you call, you call uh, the number and no, no one is answering, just a, a, a system is answering. It's taking, it takes your phone automatically because there's no point of asking for it. You just put right. your uh, ID and the entire process is starting from there. And then the system does follow up so no one has to call you and say, okay, how much you want? What do you want to do? And the underwriting process starts already on the phone. So if, if the user asking for a loan is not qualified based on the, the underwriting process, there's no use, uh, there's no point of someone calling him. 
It's, it's just a right. waste of time. And we saw that, let's say, 50%, 60% of uh, loan requests are being rejected. So just imagine going, uh, scaling it up to the big numbers, how much time you're spending on call centers, speaking to people who are not relevant. Now, those people are registering and they are not relevant for uh, either uh, they have problems with the banks they don't work uh, at the moment, they're too young, whatever. But those things are changing. So we collect all this information. We see the reason that this person was rejected. And then we're just mm-hmm. uh, taking, um, uh, well, um, like pinging this user every once in a while based on the reason he was re- uh, rejected. And then we see if mm-hmm. something changed. If something changed and now is uh, relevant for a loan, he can qualify for a loan. So the system changes his status and then sending him a message, we're happy to say that you are qualified. So now you can Mm -hmm. see a user who registered at 2016, but his first loan with us is 2021. But we didn't lose him. He's not going anywhere. Um, From that point, we just moved to everything we can think about from uh, automatic collection, automatic retention, automatic whatever and we're, we're just wrapping everything we can with uh, with technology and uh that's pretty much how the system works amazing and it, so it sounds like you know you're really looking at an industry here that is really age-old and you're taking you know something that is a very very regulatory very manual and then what, what i'm hearing in the story and the theme is you're constantly figuring out which aspects of it you can draw on from the new world from the high tech and from from new technologies and implement to change the, 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 even the you know, psychological thinking of how this industry operates and how this product is being done. And I think that you've get, you gave a few examples of how, that's, of, of how that happens. Uh, and uh, and you know, th- there are so many things that, that we didn't get to even talk about yet, which is you know, you, you're, you're starting in London and then, in, and then coming to Israel and with all the different regulations and the, and the conflicts and, and how you're perceiving the, the fintech industry uh, from, from that perspective inside and out and, and where, what's happening with Credit24 uh, today. But, but 20 minutes go by very, very fast. So I'm going to have to ask you already to come to another episode and share the second, the, the second uh, part of the story. Uh, but I do have a few questions for you, Iran. And I want to, yeah. and I, you know, I want to ask to get to know you a little bit better. So I want you to take me back to your childhood and share with me a little bit about your passions. And and I, I imagine you didn't grow up, you know, a fintech lover. And so <laughs> tell me, you know, what what did, what was what fascinated you as a kid? Well, two things: uh, space and computers. Um, the funny story is that um, my parents took my uh, my computer when I was a kid, and they said nothing good will grow from uh, from this. And they gave me a punishment by taking it because my, uh, uh, well, I wasn't doing that well in school. Um, and this is something that I remember. And I keep telling my parents, you remember you took my computer, um, but you see something obviously came out of it. So yeah, that, that was my passion from the beginning. Um, everything, Amazing. thinking outside of the box was pretty much it. Um, and I think space and computers combining together, you can figure out it's, it's not uh, something um, regular. Like um, it's always thinking about things like, uh, like an astronaut. Like uh, that's what, how my parents called me. So this Amazing. is pretty much it. <laughs> and so if, if uh, you look through your journey, was there a figure that served as some sort of inspiration or some sort of role model as you go through your journey? I think it's, it's still now that um, almost everything I do, I, I speak with my father, uh, which <laughs> who's a, who I appreciate a lot. And um, it's very important for me to hear his, um, his point of view. And um, if I need to think about someone who uh, supported me uh, through my entire process, um, uh, definitely my father. No one, uh, I won't say any famous people you know about, no one like that. Uh, I, I appreciate a lot of them, respect a lot of them. But uh, the person who, uh, who had the most influence was definitely my father. Amazing. And what are three words that you would use to describe yourself? Uh, wow. Um, <laughs> dreamer, I think, um, because I, I, I vision a lot of things. 
Um, uh, well, I think it's very hard to describe uh, three words. It's the hardest. This is the first word uh, I could think about. Um, I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> I'm sure uh, everyone say the same thing. Um, I'm very passionate and um, I'm very. I have a lot of patience. This is what some oh, everyone are saying. Patience is that's uh, very unique. Part. I don't think I've heard that one yet. Uh, well, the patience. <laughs> yeah. So this is definitely patience. Patience is definitely one of those things. Wonderful. Iran, Todaraba. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and, and I look forward to sharing the story and I look forward to hearing the second part of the story. Uh, but until then, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.